Hi, welcome to this edition of Out the Box, I'm Paul Sillers. As you know, in these uh, episodes, we look at what you get in the box. It's not meant to be a technical overview. Um, there's plenty of stock images out there on the internet. The idea of this video series is to literally just show you what you get in the box, the components, and often a first look at what the physical appliance looks like as well. Um, today, we're gonna to be looking at what is in this. The large W on here should give it away. This is a watch guard. Uh, but in here is the WatchGuard T30. Um, what we see today is exactly the same for the wireless and the non-wireless version. Um, there are no external aerials or antennas on it, um, so you'll see um, what it looks like anyway. So let's just open this box up. Um, I've got my little cheat sheet over here that I always use. Um, great little cheat sheet of which uh, firewall from WatchGuard works the best. Can't always remember everything um, of all the statistics. So let's just open that box up and just show you have a, a little look inside. Um, the T30 fills pretty much the entire top of the box. So we're gonna put the T30 aside for a moment. We'll come back to that in a minute. I'm gonna show you here, uh, next layer on, um, obviously the get starting manual on there. Um, you'll probably uh, discard that for a bit and then realize what's the default IP address I need to use to get into the device. Um, so that's always good. And now the one thing with WatchGuard is pretty cool. Um, if you're a little bit geeky like me, you get every power supply for pretty much every region um, of the world in a box, even if it's not your region. So um, we'll just take this um, top piece off. Um, so in there you're going to get a UK cable. You're going to get an uh, Australian cable. You're going to get uh, a European two-pin cable. And you're going to get a three-pin American cable. So as a starting point, pretty, uh, pretty neat. Um, you don't have to worry about your um, distributor or your online retailer sending you the correct cables. Um, then in the last piece of the packaging that you have here, um, under here you will have the uh, power pack. So let's take this out. So obviously these aren't rack mount. Um, there are various third party trays uh, for these. And please guys, I get asked so many times for rack trays um, when people have ordered a wireless device. It's not gonna work great if you put a wireless device in a metal cage. Probably no point in buying the wireless in the first place. So use a, an external one of the WatchGuard um, access points, the AP120, uh, 320, 322, or 420, and you can run it with these. So there you go, you've got a standard IEC um, connector um, in there, so three pin. Um, and just a normal um, connector that you'll find there. Okay, so that's the power pack. Um, what else you're gonna get there in the box? Um, you're gonna get a couple of meters um, of a green patch lead. So then the actual unit itself, and everybody asks us what, you know, these recycled ones, or whatever. As you can see, it's brand new. It's still actually got the seal on the front. So we'll just take the, the seal off. Now, one of the things you'll notice on this, as you can hear, these are plastic cases. The reason these are plastic cases are the wireless antennas, if you've got the wireless version, is actually inside uh, these. Obviously it's metal, same reason we're talking about, don't put it in a rack if you've got the wireless one, um, is won't get such good uh, transmission. So there you go, have a little look at the front there. You've got um, the five ports indicated so you can see what speed they're running and just lift that up enough for you to see um, there. Let's just turn that around so you can see on the back um, you've got the uh, five network ports. Obviously you've got um, zero being your WAN, one uh, being your LAN. Um, and then on the T30 and the T50, you have one of the ports which will deliver you PoE, which is great for powering an access point um, or something like that. You'll also have a console cable, two USB ports. The USB ports can be used um, for storing um, backups if you want to. You can get the device to boot and restore from a backup. Um, or you can have the, a limited number of uh, USB um, 4G LTE devices, 3G connected to it as well, although I wouldn't necessarily recommend that best option. Um, I'd probably use one that has an Ethernet port and give you a bit more um, control. Um, and then you've obviously got the power and your on-off switch. So I'm just gonna raise that up there so you can have a little look, probably just above my head if I squat down a little bit and turn it up. You can have a, a good clear view of what's in there. Um, side vents, some people ask about those, there's a small amount of ventilation on the sides. Um, that's the front again, this is like I said, it's a non-rack mount model. 
Um, but hopefully that gives you a good example. Just going to read you a couple of bits off the cheat sheet. Um, these are going to be my own personal takes. Uh, I generally take the slowest um, throughput speed um, that's recommended on here. So in this instance, it's around about 135 mega second if you've turned all the UTM features on. I would probably say in realistic terms it's going to be closer to 60 or 70 meg, but it will depend on all of the policies that you have. Um, this model is recommended for around about 20 users. Um, if you didn't have all the firewalling turned on, if you didn't have all the UTM features, the unified threat management features, um, then the published figures are around about 600 meg a second. So great for a small office, um, small fiber um, connection or something like that, that's you know sub 100 meg, um, brilliant little setup. So that is the uh, WatchGuard T30. Um, and hopefully that's been useful for you to see what's actually in the box and have a quick look at the device as well. So I'm Paul Sillers. Uh, our website's Firewalls for Now, Wireless for Now and Networking for Now.